Good night, good night, media world. Good night, Behold the Lamb Ministries, Facebook Live, Instagram, Zoom. It's always a pleasure to be on with you on this Wednesday night. My name is Gregory Baptiste from Behold the Lamb Ministries International, where we're changing lives one life at a time. Tonight, we want to talk about guarding your heart. Guard your heart. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. And we'll start at the 23rd verse. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your holy word. Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what is the hope of your calling. What's the exceeding greatness of your power to us who do believe. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can be seen. This is my prayer in Jesus' name, and all the citizens say amen. Amen, amen. Proverbs 4 and 23, it says, keep your heart with all diligence. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Everything we're going to ever deal with is going to flow out of your heart. Everything that we do flows out of our heart. It's important that we protect our heart to make sure that the right stuff gets in our hearts. And the way we let it get in, see that the heart is the doorway to your life. So you got to be very careful what you look at, what you listen to, what kind of entertainment you engage in, especially what kinds of offenses that you will take. You got to protect your heart. When something is trying to penetrate your heart and you know it is not good, then you need to stop it. You're going to have to set a police at the door of your heart and not allow negative things to get in. Only allow the things that will build you up to get into your heart. Because, you know, the Bible says out of the Issues, the issues of life flow out of the heart. So it's important that we protect and guard our heart. You know, in Mark 7, it says that out of the heart comes evil thoughts. 
It comes sexual immorality, theft, murder, lewdness, adultery, greed, malice, arrogance, foolishness, all comes out of the heart. The Bible says in Proverbs that foolishness is bound in the heart of a child, but the rod of correction will drive it far from him. So we know that those things can only get in our hearts when we allow them to flow in. Everything that comes out of your heart has to go in first. And in the order for it to get in, you have to not have a God set over your heart. You got to allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to protect your heart. You got to protect your heart because the heart is the core of your life. Everything you do flows out of your heart. Everything you do flows out of your heart. It's the essence of who you are. Everything comes out of the heart. Praise God. It's important that we watch and protect our hearts. It says, put away from you a deceitful mouth. Put away from you a deceitful mouth. And put a perverse lips far from you. Let your eyes look straight ahead. And your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Be very careful what you allow to flow into your life. It's important. I'm gonna share something with you that I experienced myself and, and it was subtle. It, it, it didn't just happen overnight. It, it was subtle. The enemy is very subtle. So, so I was, I was offended by a, a situation, a person, and I didn't even know it. I, I, I'm telling you how subtle it was. Let me tell you how subtle it was. Uh, I was very shocked by this person's behavior. And I'm just going to let you know this. If, if you have high expectations of someone, it's a doorway to disappointment. Because if they don't live up to your expectation, you could be very disappointed. And, and that's what happened. I was shocked by the behavior. And, and, and so what happened is the behavior, it, it threw me. I mean, I couldn't believe it. And what I should have did was when I saw the behavior, I should have said, you know what? When a person show you who they are, believe it. I should have believed it. And I should have guarded my heart from that point. But I didn't. I was shocked by the behavior. And the next thing happened was I began to say, Lord, I don't believe this person. So my be the behavior turned into disbelief. That was the second thing that happened. And as I pondered on how they behave and how, how I couldn't believe it, it turned into disappointment. And, 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 and listen, it was so disappointing to me because I could not believe that I was seeing and experiencing what I went through. And so the disappointment turned into offense. And, and I'm sure some of y'all could relate to what I'm talking about. And, and listen, I didn't even know it was offense. But you know, when you entertain your thoughts and, and you get those negative emotions, they will affect your life. They will affect your health. They will affect everything because once it gets in your heart or it gets down in your subconscious, it's going to affect your life. That's why I'm telling you, you better guard your heart. Because it was so subtle, it happened. And listen, I thought I, I thought I got over it. I really did. I said, you know what? That person showed me who they was. I, I got to accept that and move on. But what I didn't realize, I had allowed the disappointment to turn into offense. I was offended and didn't realize. But you know what it did? It drained me. I lost my joy. I lost my peace. And my wife was telling me, she said, what's wrong with you? And I was like, no, ain't nothing wrong with me. She said, boy, look, 
You used to be fun to be with. I said, no, that face. What happened to you? I said, I don't know. I really don't. See, it's so subtle. It'll start affecting your life and you don't even know it. It'll affect your health and you don't even know it. Because when you got a cancer or some contamination in your spirit, it'll affect your body. That's why offense is important that you don't be offended. The Bible says offenses will come. Woe to the one who brings the offense. But listen at this. It's not like you've never offended anybody. Don't become Pharisee. We've all offended people. Even if we did it and we didn't know we did it, we did it. We've offended someone. And you've been offended as well. And it's important that you don't carry the offense. Because if you do, it's going to affect your life and it's going to affect your health. And after my wife asked me over and over again for about 30 days, <laughs> if that long, if it seemed like 30 days anyway, I began to say, you know what? I need to, I need to ask the Lord about this. So I went to the table of the Lord. I went to the table of the Lord and I began to communicate, ask him, I said, Lord, if there's something that's bothering me that I don't even know of, something that suddenly snuck into my life because I didn't have a God at my heart's door, then show me. And the Lord took me straight to the table of offense. And he began to show me. And he showed it just like that. He said, listen, this is what happened. You, you were in disbelief. You, you couldn't believe the behavior. It went from disbelief to disappointment and from disappointment to offense. And then you got offended. And he said, you're going to have to deal with that offense. Because even, even your wife said, well, look, you, you know, you look like you're losing weight. Are you sick? I'm like, ain't nothing wrong with me. <laughs> but she kept asking me. I said, look how much weight you lose. And this, that. I'm like, wait a minute. I don't even have an appetite no more. I lost my appetite. I lost my joy. I lost my peace. And I'm talking to some of y'all. Because, you know, you might have thought that you were just depressed, but maybe you're offended. Maybe you've allowed something to seep into your life and you've taken offense to something, somebody, some kind of behavior. Whatever it is, it will affect your life. And when I began to look, God began to show me what it was. And I began to address that. And I began to speak to those negative emotions. You know, Bible says that you could speak to the sycamine tree. You could speak to the bitterness. You could speak to the unforgiveness. And it has to obey you. See, our voice is our authority. And your, your brain needs to know your decision. So you got to speak it out of your mouth and it'll obey you. And I had to speak that thing. I said, no, you are not going to hold me captive. I didn't find out where the ax head fell. And now I'm going back and I'm going to deal with the offense. I'm going to uproot that thing out of my life because it has no right in me. But I legally opened the door without even knowing. It was just as subtle as the enemy. He said, right in. And, and some of us may be offended and don't even know it. But I'll tell you what, offense, and unforgiveness, bitterness will hold you down and it will steal from you and take your help from you. I, I remember, and I this I hold this dear to me. This was this young lady uh, who went through a bad, bad divorce. And her husband had a great lawyer. He had some resources, and he took everything from her. Took the house from under her. Even the kids left. And, and she got really, really mad about that. And her anger turned into bitterness. And right around the time when she got really bitter, she began to have some back problems. 
uh, back problems so bad to no matter where she went, what doctor she went to, they could not help her. And she went from physician to physician trying to get help and couldn't get any. She went from pastors and preachers, evangelists, trying to get prayer, but nothing gave her results. As she went to a few places, she said where the pastor prayed for, and she got temporary results, but went home back to the same excruciating pain. And she finally went to one evangelist who was having a revival tent meeting, and, and she went up for prayer. And she told him she had been suffering with this back problem for a long time. And the, the evangelist asked her, he said, when did this start? More or less, where did the ax head fall? Sometimes we got to ask ourselves, when you're having health issues, and you know the Bible said he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we're healed. If we're not experiencing healing, then maybe there's something hindering us from receiving what God has for us. <clears throat> so he asked the lady, he said, when did this thought happen? And she stopped back and she said, you know, it started happening right around the time when I was going through a bad divorce. And she said, my husband, he took everything. He took the house, the car, he had the finances, my children left, I lost everything. And she said, I got really, really bitter. And, and that's when I started having that excruciating pain in my back. The evangelist had the wisdom of God. He said, listen, that's where the problem lies. He said, if you're willing to release your husband from the unforgiveness, the enemy has to release you. Because you held him. You gave the devil legal right to hold you. He said, are you willing to let go of everything that happened and put it under the blood? She said, I am. And he prayed a prayer, simple prayer. They went to the courts of heaven. He led her straight to the throne room and he, he got her to repent for holding unforgiveness, for being bitter about the situation. And as soon as she prayed and released her husband, the devil released her. The pain left and never came back. Why am I telling you that? Because you may be struggling with something that you think is one thing, but it may be something else. It may be a heart issue. See, everything in our lives is a heart issue. We got to be protective of what we allow to seep into our hearts. Protect your heart with all diligence but out of it are the issues of life. You know, I just told you, it says out of the heart comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality. You say evil thoughts out of our heart. Yeah, I'm not talking about the heart that pumps blood. I'm talking about your subconscious mind. The spirit man that governs your life. You know, it's one thing to hear something in your conscious mind. It's another thing to think about it enough till it drops into your subconscious. When it gets down into your subconscious, which is your conscious below, it becomes a part of who you are. Some of y'all think about the wrong thing all day long. But whatever you think about is in the direction you're going. Your thoughts are directing you in the way you should go. That's why it's important that you govern your thoughts and allow the Holy Spirit to watch over the thoughts you allow to go in and out of your life. I want you to turn over the 17th chapter with me. 
17th chapter of Luke. Luke 17. I want to talk to you because you know there's good and bad emotions. And I was, I was dealing with negative emotions when I got offended. And it, it changed my behavior without me even realizing it. I became real standoffish. I, I wasn't who I used to be. I didn't even realize. I thank God for my wife who kept bringing it to my attention. And finally, I called it. And I realized that the emotions was affecting who I was. I had lost my joy, my peace. I was still going through the motions, just like some of you. Still going through the motions. But there's something deeper that's holding me back. And I began to deal with that emotion. I began to speak to it. Like the Bible says. Listen at this. In 17th chapter of Luke, it says, uh, then he said to his disciples, it is impossible that no offenses should come. So that means offenses are going to come. Is how you handle them. But woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone was hung around his neck and he was thrown into the sea than that he should offend one of these little ones. Take heed to yourselves. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day return to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Seven times in a day. Well, some of y'all ain't got that kind of patience. One time is okay. You know, you go by the old book. You do it to me once, shame on you. You do it to me twice, shame on me, or however that works. But most of us can't go no more than twice. He said seven times. If he does it seven times and he repents, forgive him. Look, even the apostles had a problem with that. They said, look, Lord, increase our faith. <laughs> In other words, you're going to give me more faith for this. If I got to forgive him seven times, you're going to have to increase my faith. And this is what he said. If you have the faith as a mustard seed, you know how small a mustard seed is? He said, you don't need a lot of faith. You just need to obey the word. You need to do what I'm telling you. You don't have to have a lot of faith to forgive. You got to have a decision making, a change of mind. You got to say, you know what? No matter what it is, I forgive. I like to do it like this. My wife said, forgive on impact. If you forgive on impact, you be the forgot the first offense before he does the second. If you can forgive on impact. Most people can't forgive on impact. Because they're taking account of the offense. See, when you log it in your book, oh, it's a problem. If you write them down, oh, it's a problem. And I, I promise you, a lot of people write them down. People are calculating. So they calculate everything. Their whole lives are calculated. If you get around a person who's calculating, you know how they operate. Because they add everything up. How many times they bring you to the store. Everything is calculated. I promise you. And, and the day is going to come where he's going to cash in too. Oh, he's going to cash in. Trust, trust me. And, it's, and you may not even be looking at it like that. But people who live like that, that's how they function. That's their rule of thumb. And so it's important that you understand who you're dealing with. That's why the Bible said, know those who labor amongst you. You need to know the people you're working with. Because you won't be shocked when you see something. Or like I was shocked when I saw that behavior. If you know the person, you ain't shocked. Because you know them. But some people haven't developed yet all the way. And so they still have a lot of growing to do. And you can tell when you're offended. When the phone call come in, you look at the phone, 
and you don't answer. I'm going to deal with it later. You already know. Or you get around somebody that you really don't want to be around. And as soon as you find out they're coming, it can dampen your spirit. <laughs> Look, you offended. You was having a good time. And then they said, get it on the way. Lord, have mercy. Everything just like threw a bucket of water on me right there. He on his way right now. <laughs> I'm looking for a reason to leave. <laughs> you know you offended. Listen, don't let the offense hold you. Because it will hold you captive and make you a slave. You already know I'm talking to some of y'all. People walk in the door right now. I'm like, no. <laughs> you don't even say it out your mouth, but it's all over your face. You know, the Bible said, well, the Bible don't say this, but they said, isn't it funny how the way you feel shows on your face? You can't even help it. Isn't that something? People are walking. And look, <laughs> the face you show, everybody else knows something that's right. You're trying to play it off, you know, but you can't. Because it's obvious. Don't live in openness. Release it. Let it go. Speak to your emotions. You got to speak to your emotions. And they will obey you. Because negative emotions will hold you captive and it'll shorten your life it, it'll take your vigor your excitement it'll take the fun out of who you are i'm telling you i experienced it firsthand and i got my joy back i got my peace back amen i got my strength back i'm telling you it was draining me you know some of y'all wake up in the morning you feel drained Hey, just drag around. You know how you just drag around? You already know. You ain't dead yet. But if if if, if somebody didn't tell you, you wouldn't know it. Because you don't, you hate to get up in the morning. You regret waking up. Isn't that saying? A person who has life regret waking up. Gotta go through another day. You ought to get up with such excitement and enthusiasm. Wake everybody else up when you get up. My wife used to jump up in the morning, put the worship on so loud, the children jump up. <laughs> they can't sleep. You gotta play it so loud. It's my house. Play it loud as I want. <laughs> when you get your own house, you can play whatever you want. Praise God. Listen, don't let offense. Hold you back. They'll steal from you. I was thinking about this after God showed me. And I sat at the table with the Lord. He began to show me the table of offense. And then when I dealt with all of that, got that. And then he said, you know what now? I want you to realize there's good and bad emotions. But he said, even good emotions could be dangerous. And I said, how so, Lord? He said, listen. You could have a good emotion where somebody is building you up and, and telling you how much they appreciate you. If you're not careful, especially if you're somebody who don't feel appreciated. Oh, if you're somebody that don't feel appreciated and you get somebody else that's telling you how much they appreciate you and how much they value you, how important you are, how brilliant you are. That, that, that sets you up because you're already wrong. And, and, and it's easy to influence you. And the enemy will use that to lure you out and get you outside of your, the will of God for your life. Because everybody needs some encouragement. And let me tell you something. If you don't get it at home, you'll get it from somewhere else. But you're going to get it. I, I, I work with a lot of guys and I watch how I could tell what's going on at the house based on how they respond on the job. When, when a young man gives one of the young ladies a compliment, you could tell they flat. Oh, they all excited, which tells me they don't get that kind of compliment at home. And, and setting themselves up for a fall. 
And that's a that's a good emotion, but it could be very, very dangerous if you're vulnerable. Be careful. There's good and bad emotions. The negative emotions will weigh you down. The, the positive will build you up. But can you handle the build up? Or, or will you let it go to your head? and become egotistic. Be careful. Because the devil will get you on one hand or the other. If he can't get you to be bitter, he'll get you on the other side. He don't care how he gets you, as long as he gets you. You know what I'm saying? He, he don't care which, which one you fall for, long as you fall. The whole objective is to stumble you and make you fall. See, that's what happened with the offense. It stumbled me and made me fall. And I didn't even realize I had fallen. You know, it's bad when you fall down and you don't know yourself. That's bad. When you fall down and you don't know you didn't fail, oh man, you're in trouble. I'm serious. But that's the suddenness of the enemy. He'll lure you out and get you out there, get you to thinking about stuff that you shouldn't be thinking about emotions. And, and, and before you know it, he got you caught in the well. And that's now that's all you think about. And, and now that person has moved in your head and he ain't even paying rent. He living for free. And you ain't gonna let him live in your house at where you stay at and not pay something, but he's living in your head and he ain't paying rent. It's time for you to evict him. Deal with the offense at hand. Because the Bible says, listen to what it says. It says, he told them, you don't need a lot of faith. You need the faith of a mustard seed. You can say to this mulberry tree. Now, the reason why he used the mulberry tree or the sycamore tree is because of the history of that tree. We're not going to even go into all that. I'm going to tell you this, that that sycamine tree represents that offense, that bitterness, that unforgiveness. And he said, if you say to the bitterness or to the unforgiveness or the resentment or whatever it is, if you say to it, be pulled up by the roots and planted to the sea, it will obey you. But guess what? It's only going to obey you when you say it got to leave. You got to evict it yourself. You invited it into your house. You invited it into your heart. And you did it with your words. In the same way you let him in, you're going to have to put him out. You got to say, you got to go. Catch a thief, make him pay it back seven times. Devil, you have no right to live here in this house. Unforgiveness, you got to leave. Jesus' name. I'm serving your, your eviction notice. You got to go. You got to get it out of your home. He said, if you say to it, it has to obey you. Now listen to this. And which of you having a servant, plowing, attending sheep, will say to him when he has come in from the field, Come at once and sit down to eat. Or will he not rather say to him, prepare something for my supper. Gird yourself and serve me. See, your faith is your servant. Faith is the servant of the believer. You're not going to have a servant and you're going to come in the house, tell him, sit down and you're going to serve him. No, he's going to serve you. Your faith will serve you. Your faith is a servant to the believer. And with your faith, you can tell offense, you got to go. With your faith, you got to protect your heart. You got to give the Holy Spirit the legal right to say, you know what? That thought is not something I'm going to entertain. I kick that out in Jesus' name. See, too many thoughts we allow to flow in our lives. 
instead of stopping them at the door and say, oh, no, I ain't going to entertain that. Though. The devil is alive. See, that's the problem. We don't know how to say, hold up. Where you going, boy? Oh, no, you ain't, you ain't welcome in here. Not in this house. You let him come in, sit out, drop his feet on the table, get a glass of water. They're too late to put him out now. He done got comfy. That's what happened with thoughts. See, you let him come in. You sit around and talk to him a while. Then all of a sudden you realize, this is true. The hell is I'm doing? <laughs> and like, you're like, you let somebody in, you don't even know who it is. They come to the door, and you, who is it? John. John Lou. John was supposed to be here. <laughs> Boy, if you don't get me in front of that door. <laughs> You got to stop opening the door for the devil. You got to stop it. When the thought comes, oh, wait a minute. See, you don't set a guard. And that's why any thoughts just flowing in your life. You already know. You know, if you don't watch the thoughts that flow into your life, you're going to be a mess. You know what, what I'm talking about. You have thoughts that's way in left field. Instead of you saying, wait a minute. Now, I know that didn't come from him. <laughs> I know that wasn't the Holy Spirit. That thought has to go back to the pit of hell from whence it came. You got to guard your heart with all diligence. Don't just let stuff flow into your life, man. Just flow into your mind, just anything. Just think anything. No. Protect your heart. Watch what you think. The Bible said, take no thought. In other words, don't take a thought, especially if it ain't from heaven. And you, God knows you know the thoughts that came from hell. And you know the thoughts that came straight from hell. And when them thoughts come, you can let them know. Wrong house, buddy. You got to go back where you came. Don't even entertain. Because the devil will make sure He'll bring something to your life and he'll magnify something. He said, you heard what he said to you? Oh, you know he will. And you didn't even listen. It went right over your head. You didn't even pay attention. Then the devil said, you heard what he said? And then he said, what did he say? You know what he said. <laughs> Before you do it. And then you start rehearsing it. What? I can't believe he said that. <laughs> he got you now. Oh, he learned you. In. Oh, I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. I, I didn't know he said that. See, he said, oh, he said, oh, wait a minute. That's what he said. <laughs> you and the devil having this long conversation, and he pumping you up. You should have, oh, you should have checked him. You know, because he going to do it again. Oh, my God. Oh, you know it. You're in a whole conversation with the devil. And listen, that's how it happened. You have one little thought. Somebody says something, even on the phone, they might, you know, y'all having a conversation before they hang up, they say one thing. Ooh. So what he said? Wait a minute. <laughs> you, and, and then you think about it, the devil said, yeah, that's what she said. Yeah. Well, what she meant by that? You know what she meant. And then you know what? You listen, you're talking about it. To, you and the devil talking, right? And you, the more he talk about it, the madder you get. And I'm gonna deal with it. And before you know it, you just say, look, let him call back. When I when I talk to him, I'm gonna let him know. Don't don't play with me. <laughs> Lord, that way. And so I'm just telling you, that's how the enemy works. Be, be mindful that we need to set a guard over our heart. And listen, if there's a person that when you hear the phone ring or you see their calling coming in, if it bothers you, you're offended. If they grieve you when they walk in the door, you're offended. If when they hug you, you curl, you open. <laughs> I could go on and on, but you already know the person I'm talking about. Fix it. Get it right. You're going to have to get right or you're going to get left. God bless you. I'll keep you till we meet again. My name is Pastor Gregory Baptiste from Behold the Land Ministries, where we entertain, where we're changing lives one life at a time. You want to sow into this ministry? We, we do have a cash app. Uh, we've got Gibblefy, and we also got uh, Dollar Sign, Behold the Lamb Church. But before I go, let's have a word of prayer. Say, Heavenly Father, 
I believe Jesus Christ died and went to hell so I wouldn't have to go. I believe he died and took my place. He was my substitute. Lord Jesus, come into my heart, be my savior, be my Lord. I'll follow you all the days of my life. Cause me to search my heart like David said, search and see if there be any wickedness in me. Lead me in the way of everlasting. Lord, I love you today. And I thank you that today is a new day for me. In Jesus' name, and all God's children, say amen. Amen. God bless you.